Hello everyone, Vincent Tio from HTT Test here. I'm a tea reviewer and professional calibrator. Earlier this week, I spent some time testing a Sony 100-inch ZD9, which is also known as the Bravia Z9D in the USA. This is a full-array local dimming LED LCD from Sony Electronics. Now, when I filmed the entire video on the premise, I didn't realize that because of this exact same Christmas jumper that I'm actually wearing, the microphone was rubbing against it and it was creating a static crackly noise like this. Hello everyone, Vincent here from HTV Pass here. Today I'm spending some time with the massive Sony 100 inch ZD9 which made the entire video unusable. So I've had to film this whole presentation again from my own studio and hopefully you will forgive me for inserting some B-rolls that I filmed there while talking about this TV in an entirely different location. I'm quite sad, I'm beyond sad, and I really regret wearing this Christmas jumper on that day, but there's nothing I can do about it. But what I want to tell you is how excited I am about the Sony 100-inch 39 that I tested the other day. So let's start off by thanking the company that allowed me, that gave me this opportunity to test the Sony 100-inch ZD9. So they are AWE Europe, they are a trade-only distributor who supplies high-end AV equipment to the custom install and also smart home technology markets, CDR markets. And it just so happens that they have a 100-inch Sony Z9 and so I approached them and they've been kind and generous enough to let me spend half a day there to go through my measurements of this fantastic television. So thank you again AWE Europe and if you wish to purchase this television, if you have the means, the space and the budget, then by all means I will put their contact detail in the YouTube section below. Right, so let's get on with the television itself then. It is a 100 inch set as you can see and it probably can't fit into a normal home and it, it's fitted on these two feet here which is located by the sides of the panel but there are also a couple of other options where you can actually put it on a tabletop stand now you must probably have an extremely sturdy table to support this television because it weighs around 145 kilograms i've been informed with the feet so it is going to be quite heavy and you will need to have a really sturdy table otherwise the whole table would collapse because of the weight of this display you can also wall mount it this sony 100 zd9 or z90 but you will have to order a special wall mount bracket from sony themselves it is not actually supplied in the box and the design is not very different from the 65-inch and 75-inch Sony ZD9 that we've tested and reviewed and calibrated over the past 18 months. And it has a slice of living design ethos. What this means is that there is a black band around the side trim, therefore splitting it into half as if two panels are glued together. Also, the back of the television is covered in grid lines and Sony has also supplied some plastic plates for you to cover up the wires for a tidier cable management. Now, in terms of the actual panel itself, it is a VA type LCD panel and I managed to take a macro shot of the subpixel structure. It is a true RGB subpixel and from what I could research from the number of suppliers that can actually supply a HDR capable 100 inch panel, I think we drilled it down to 
this Taiwanese company called Inolux, who may be supplying this panel to Sony to build this 100-inch ZD9. But it is a VA-type LCD panel, so it is capable of deep blacks, but the viewing angle is narrower than, let's say, IPS LCD panel, let alone self-emissive displays like plasmas and OLEDs. But because of its sheer screen size, the Sony ZD9, I don't really see that much of a limitation in terms of the viewing angle. It still presents a very watchable picture, but obviously for the most accurate picture, for the best viewing experience, you are advised to sit directly in front of the screen. Now, let's go through the picture quality and the calibration side of things. So, the first thing that I did was to try and calibrate this Sony ZD9. I know that is my trade. I don't believe in assessing picture quality without having calibrated a television. So the pre-calibration grayscale in the most accurate picture preset was still presenting some slight blue tint. This is very common on Sony LED LCDs and even their OLEDs. So I used the 2 point and 10 point white balance controls to neutralize the grayscale to the industry standard of D65 white point and then you can see from the color checker chart here that the colors generally do fall into place out of 140 patches measured in this quite challenging color checker SG chart there are no measured color patches that exceeded the visible inaccuracy threshold of Delta Era 3 so even though this Sony 100-inch ZD9, like all Sony consumer televisions to date, it doesn't have any advanced color management system or CMS, once you calibrate the grayscale to D65, most of the colors, in fact, all of the colors that we measured on this television fell into place and clicked into place very nicely. So all the colors will be realistic, natural, and accurate. So that was from the SDR side of things. I also need to tell you about the black level. The thing about full array local dimming LED LCD is that one of the first things that I normally do is to try and count the number of zones. Now, we know that on the 65 inch 39, the number of zones is around 648 and the 75 inch 39, it is around 800 zones. And this is a 100 inch screen and I would expect a higher number of zones. When I ran our own custom altered test pattern consisting of a small white box crawling horizontally and then vertically against the edges of a black background, and even in a really darkened room, this facility at AWE Europe, they have automated blinds that can shut off the light quite effectively. And even in such a darkened room, I found it extremely difficult to try and count the number of zones precisely because of how many zones there are and how effective Sony's local dimming algorithm is. So from what I can tell, and this is just a best guess, I could probably make out around 25 vertical columns and 40 horizontal rows giving us a total of 1,000 independently dimmable zones and perhaps even more I tried to maximize the backlight, I tried standing off axis, I tried forcing HDR mode to count the number of zones and I still couldn't pinpoint it precisely. And 1000 zones is my best guess if that is indeed accurate. So this is by far the highest number of local dimming zones I've ever counted on a consumer LED LCD television. That is if you can consider the Sony 100 ZD9 as a consumer television. So with this many local dimming zones, how does the black level look? When we put up a 4x4 ANSI checkerboard test pattern to try and measure it, we found that once we align peak white to our normal dark room target of 120 nits, the black level measured around 0 0.05 nits if if we switch local dimming off, so if we switch auto local dimming off, the black level measured 0 0.05 nits with a peak white of 120 nits. But no one who buys a Sony ZD9 will be switching off local dimming because that is their core technology, that is their unique selling point, that is what makes it so special. So once 
we switch on auto local dimming, the black level on the central black patch that we are measuring actually dropped to 0.004 nits, which is supremely impressive because that brings it to almost as deep a uh, black as an OLED. And for all intents and purposes, for the vast majority of scenes, the black level is essentially almost as deep as a self emissive display like an OLED television. But obviously, in scenes with stars or star field scenes, where there's pinpoint dots of brightness against a black background, then the self emissive displays like plasmas and OLEDs, they can still do better because of their per pixel illumination control. But still, I think with 1000 local dimming zones and with Sony's fantastic local dimming algorithm and uh, backlight master drive technology here, <laughs> the black level is probably the best that I've actually seen from an LED LCD display. Now, let's move on to the HDR side of things then, which I'm really quite interested in because when we measured the 65 inch and the 75 inch Z9, the peak brightness came out at about 1800 nits, which is the highest we've ever measured using our meter. So imagine my surprise when I actually put this meter onto the 100 inch Sony Z9. And after we calibrated the HDR side of things to the industry standard of D65 white point, we measured a uh, peak brightness on a 10% window of, wait for it, wait for it, 2,800 nits, right? As I was carrying out the live measurements, I was just having this really white green on my face because I just couldn't believe this number. And I checked and checked to see whether I've made a mistake somewhere. Sometimes if you set the video level to RGB to PC or something else, then you may get an erroneous higher reading. But I've double checked, triple checked everything. My meter was working fine. My jetty to which I was profiling the client K10A was working fine and the video levels were set correctly. So this TV was capable of between 2800 and 2900 nits, which is by far the highest that we've actually measured on a consumer television. Again, if you can consider this a consumer television, and it exceeds the 65 inch and 75 inch Z9 by about a thousand nits, which is going to give so much impact in HDR scenes. And that is indeed what I found when I played some 4K Blu-rays on this 100-inch Sony ZD9. They just take on a more impactful, more immersive look, partly because of the screen size as well of 100 inches. But also, this peak brightness just gives so much accuracy, so much precision, so much impact to every single HDR scene there. And in conjunction with the Backlight Master Drive that can control 1,000 local dimming zones in such a, how should I put it, invisible manner. I want to say invisible because there is no hallowing or blooming artifacts that I could really notice when set at the front of the television. So when you combine all these factors together, the HDR impact is truly fantastic. I watched many of my reference scenes from, let's say, Pan to The Martian to Mad Max. And all I can say is I'm sitting there in awe of the HDR experience that I'm actually seeing from the screen itself. For example, in a scene in Mad Max, as they went chasing after Charlize Theron, in the desert, you can see the vehicle, the grills, how reflective they are and how the sunlight actually bounces off it, creating this sparkle, this shininess that is just so impactful with the 100-inch Sony Z9 that is capable of a peak brightness of 2,800 or 2,900 nits. And full-field peak brightness came in at around 700 nits. This IP3 gamut coverage measured around 96%. But because of such a high peak brightness, the color volume naturally increases too. And all sorts of colors became so intense, so vibrant, yet retained their accuracy. 
And I just have to tip my hats off to Sony again for creating such a masterpiece. This is by far and away the best HDR TV that I've witnessed to date. Now let's talk about Sony's approach to tone mapping. If you have followed the videos on this channel over the past few months, you will probably know by now that Sony's philosophy to HDR tone mapping is to try and preserve average picture level at the expense of sacrificing some specular bright highlight detail. And when we played Ryan Masiola's HDR10 reference test disc through a Sony X800 4K Blu-ray player to be displayed on the 100-inch ZD9, what we can see is that even though the TV was capable of 2800 nits of peak brightness, the TV was clipping at around 2000 nits. But bear in mind that that particular test pattern was mastered up to 10,000 nits. And Sony has this on the fly technology that analyzes the incoming histogram and then it will decide on its own at what point to clip. So I believe that if you feed another scene with a lower, how should I put it, max CLL and things like that, the TV will ignore it and then it will just calculate the highest pixel and then just try and preserve APL and sacrifice some specular highlight detail. So you will lose some specular highlight detail but it is not as drastic as you think because this TV is capable of a higher peak brightness and the X1 Extreme chipset on this television is certainly capable of making its own decision to try and preserve a brighter picture, brighter overall brightness or APL average picture level for a more consistent HDR experience rather than trying to retain all the specular highlight detail which may be quite fleeting and rare throughout the entire movie. So I would say this is a reference level set for HDR and currently it supports HDR10 and HLG or hybrid log gamma formats but the X1 Extreme chipset that is contained on this television is also capable of Dolby Vision with a firmware update in the future and this week Sony UK has informed me that the Dolby Vision update will be rolled out gradually from the end of January on all the Sony TVs with the X1 Extreme processor such as the Sony XC93, the XC94, the Bravia A1 OLED and the ZD9 including this 100 inch monster here. Now let's talk very quickly about input lag as well if you decide to buy this television and game on it. Now surprisingly, the input lag in 1080p SDR mode is around 63 milliseconds which is a bit on the high side. Now when I tried to use the HD Fury linker to try and upscale the signal from the Leo Botna tester to 4K to test the 4K HDR input lag, it just gave me an error signal on screen so I couldn't really measure the input lag in 4K HDR mode. However, from our experience with X1 Extreme chipsets, we know that if you feed it a native 4K resolution, then the input lag will generally come down by about one frame. So I would expect that if the 1080p SDR input lag on this Sony 100 inch ZD9 is around 63 milliseconds, then the 4K HDR input lag should be around 47 milliseconds or so. Okay, so this TV is available to buy and I don't think you will find many retailers that stock them or show them, but AWE Europe is certainly one of them and the price is not cheap. It is £60,000, but for me, this is a reference set for HDR. It has the highest peak brightness that I've ever measured on a consumer television and if you can accommodate the size, 100 inch is certainly capable of giving you the most immersive viewing experience in the home in conjunction with this high peak brightness. And my worry was that with 2018 just around the corner and with CES so close that I wouldn't have the opportunity to see and test this television anymore, it will be discontinued. But luckily I managed to squeeze this in just before Christmas and from what Sony UK is telling me, this set is going to continue selling next year as well.
certainly the 100-inch Z9 will continue to be available throughout 2018. It won't be discontinued, so you can still buy it through the likes of AWE Europe. If you found this video useful, please click the like button and subscribe to the HDTV Test YouTube channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.